Hello, brothers and sisters. Brother Trey here again. Welcome to today's Bible study out of Genesis chapter 17. Let's go ahead and read it, shall we? It says, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And will make my covenant between me and thee. And I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shalt thy name any more be called Abram, but the, thy name shall be Abram, for a father out of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, exceedingly fruitful, and I will make many I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee and their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will Give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, and at the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant before thee, or therefore thou and thy seed after thee and these and their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and and you and thy seed after thee. Every man-child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall, be circum or ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man-child in your generations, that he is born in the house, or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircum uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people, he hath broken my covenant. And God said unto Abraham, For Sarai, thy wife, shall, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on upon his face, and laughed. And said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah the, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for the everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he be yet, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money. Every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. And Abram was ninety years old and nine, when he was circumcised in the or when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was four, 13 years old 
when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised, and Ishmael his son. And all the men of his house, born in, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. So Abraham was 99 years old, and the Lord appeared unto him. And he wanted to make a covenant, made a promise, a binding promise that he would keep with Abraham. And he told him he would be a father of many nations. And his name, he would no longer be called, he would receive a new name. He wouldn't be called Abram anymore, he'd be called Abraham. Because he'd be a father of many nations. He said he would make him fruitful and make nations of him, a king shall come out of him. And he said he was gonna make the covenant with him with Abram, his seed. Or he would make a covenant between God and between God himself and Abram and Abraham's seed. So Abraham was obedient to God. He was faithful and true. And God kept promising that he was going to bless him, that he would be a father. He would be a father of many nations. Um, and then since Abraham was so faithful that God wanted to change his name, and I'm sure there was a purpose. I mean, because simple, simply stating that, like, that is who he was, changing who he was from Abram. I don't know the original meaning of it, but I believe Abraham is the, would be a word for a father of many nations. So God wanted to bless Abraham and his seed, and kings would come from him. Um, I know I'm repeating myself. Um, Now will give unto thy seed and to thy seed after thee the land where, where thou art and art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So he's going to give them the land that they're living in now, the land of Canaan. He said, where you are a stranger, he was going to give. The land that he, where he was a stranger, he was going to give to Abram. And he said that he would be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee and thy generation. So he's saying, telling them to keep his, um, keep the covenant of what he tells them to do. So, so he's telling him, this is my covenant which shall keep between me and you and thy seed after me, after you. So he's telling them what that covenant is. Every man child among you shall be circumcised which every male knows is um, removing the foreskin from his boy parts, from his, from their penis. Anybody who doesn't know. Um, so, uh, this, Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. So it was a sign of the covenant between God and Abraham, and Abraham's seed. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of, of any stranger which is not of thy seed. So anybody that was in Abraham's house, whether it was his child, related to him or a servant of some sort all the males were to be circumcised he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money so a servant or 
Somebody, somebody might want to say slave, but uh, most times servants say, or most scripture says servants. Um, he that born in the house and he's bought with that money must needs, has to be, must needs, has to be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for the everlasting covenant. So his covenant will be kept as long as all men in the household are circumcised. So if they keep their end of the deal, God is going to keep his promise. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised. That, sh that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So, um, anyone that doesn't get circumcised, that doesn't keep the covenant with God, he's going to be broken off from the covenant. So they didn't hold up their part of the deal. They weren't obedient to God and getting circumcised. And God said unto Abram, as for Sarai, as Sarai, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be Sarah. And I looked that up, and it is her, um, Sarah actually means princess. So, um, indeed, her name is going to be changed too for Abraham's sake. Um, and, her, and she also will be blessed. She said, I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her. So he's going to bless Abraham's wife because of the connection. Because she is one flesh with Abram. And she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So continue with the covenant with Abraham. He's going to bless Abraham's wife because of Abraham. And then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a 100 years old? And shall Sarah, that is 90 year old, bear? And Abram said to, unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might be live before thee. So Ishmael might live before thee. I'm guessing because about Ishmael be obedient unto God. Uh, and God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. So he's promising that she will give birth to a son. And shall call his name Isaac. So there's a name. So, And I will establish my covenant with him for everlasting covenant with his seed after him. So he promises to keep the covenant with Abram's son, Isaac. The promised son of being born of Sarah. Now as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. And will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. So he, even though that wasn't the promised child, that wasn't the promised son, that was still Abraham's son. He was still, for Abraham said, going to bless Abraham's seed, which was Ishmael. He was part of Abraham's seed. So he's going to be old. I will have blessed him will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. So he will bless him exceedingly. There will be fruit and multiply him. Twelve princes shall he beget, and that will make him a great nation. So that is part of the covenant that God made, a covenant and promise that God made with Abraham, that he will bless Ishmael as well. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. which Sarah shall bear unto thee at set time in the next year. And he left, so he gave him a time frame of when, and when Sarah shall bear. And she left off from talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin, and the selfsame did, excuse me, as he had said unto him, and Abraham was 90 years old and nine, and which when he was for, circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Uh, and Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. foreskin and the same day was Abraham circumcised. And Ishmael, his son, and all the men of his house born in the house, or uh, men of his house born in the house and bought with money of the stranger were circumcised with him. So, there, 
Immediately after the Lord got done speaking with him, Abraham rushed to keep his promise and or keep his end of the deal. Keep be obedient instructions of God to the will of God because he wanted to make sure that he and his his children his children's children were blessed. Because he believed God. He said that God said he was going to bless him. He was going to bless his seed. So immediately he was going to do his part. He wanted to keep his end of the deal. He wanted to keep his end, end of the covenant. The agreement on which God made with him. The covenant. The promise. And so Abraham kept his end of the deal. Quickly. Without hesitation. So immediately... He kept his end of the deal. So Abraham, oh, and all, Abraham was obedient. He was faithful unto God. He oh, was obedient to no end. That's why God blessed his seed. So this is why God made this promise. And because of that, because Abraham was so faithful, so obedient that so obedient that God had to change his name because he wasn't like everybody else. He was obedient. He was true. He was faithful to God. So I'm guessing he changed his name because it, it, it suited him and suited what God would do to him. Same thing with Sarah. That's why he changed her name. Because of Abraham, he changed her name as well. Because she would be a mother of nations. And she was worthy of a name that suited her. A mother of nations. He changed Abraham's name to Abraham's name to be a father. Because he was going to be a father of nations. Um, and he... Promised to bless his seed because of of Abraham's obedience and faithfulness unto God. And just how Abraham was quick to obey is just shows you how how faithful Abraham was. He was quick to obey. He was quick. He was on it. He didn't hesitate. And that's the way we should be. We should, shouldn't hesitate. God tells us to do something. God makes us a, a promise. If we will do this, then we shouldn't hesitate. We should do our part. Um, I believe that um, maybe he'll give us a spiritual name or our name will change or um, something about, uh, definitely something about us will change when we are born again. Um, we become a new creation in, in Christ, which is in the lineage of uh, the promise of, in the lineage of Isaac, Jesus Christ, um, the Messiah. He is in the lineage of Abraham. Down the line, but he's in the lineage of Ab Abraham. So he is the part of the promise. He is the way of salvation. He Promise the way to salvation, and Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. So, therefore, through Jesus Christ, the Lord kept his promise of salvation from sin and death. Um, so, uh, indeed, we need to be obedient like Abraham. We become new creations. We become a new creation in through our faith in Jesus Christ, He all the old things, all old things pass away, and, and all all things become new through Jesus Christ. So, um, a new name is basically written upon us. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's no longer us who he sees, but he sees the Christ that's within us. 
we receive the Spirit of Christ within us. So he doesn't know, he no longer sees us. He sees Jesus Christ. And he sees us as righteous. We are or we are the righteousness we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And for Abraham Um, the Lord was faithful, or Abraham was faithful, and it was considered unto as righteousness. So as long as we're faithful to God, we're obedient, we stay true to God, we are faithful and obedient, then he's going to bless us. Clearly, he did this with Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham, as long as you're obedient. Circumcising, no, we no longer receive, I mean, Many people still do the circumcision of Abraham in the foreskin of the male penis and as far as that. But, you know, women can't do that. Um, the circumcision is a, that we do is a circumcision of the heart. It's a, you know, re removal of the flesh upon our the flesh, our, the fleshly desires and things of our on our heart to remove that sin nature, to remove to, uh, you know, sacrifice the flesh, to to be a living sacrifice, to give up some things, of our, what our hearts desire would be sinful and unclean to God. We give up these things as, as the Lord asks, asks us to do, not only in Scripture, but He might ask us personally. As He speaks with us, we give up these things that, uh, that, that we desire. We could say... For instance, he might, not necessarily, but he might give us, tell us to give up social media. He might tell us, or even just to fast, give up social media, to give up soda, give up coffee, give up um, certain foods, to um, stop doing certain things in our day. It's, it's a sacrifice. Like Abraham, we will get into that later in our Bible study, but... Um, Go later, Abraham is willing to give his only son. He's willing to give Isaac as a burnt as a sacrifice unto the Lord because the Lord asked him to. How what are we willing to give up for to the Lord? How obedient are we? How obedient are we going to be? What kind of sacrifices are we gonna make? What are we gonna give up? Are we going to be willing to give it give it all? I mean, we claim that we give it our heart, but our actions speak louder than words. What are you willing to give up? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to give up everything to follow Christ? It's not working for you the way you do now. Um... You're not willing to do that. You're not willing to give everything up. You're not willing to give up a life or have a life of sacrifice or willing to give up anything as, as if you're not willing to change. Let's put it that way. Not willing to give something up. Give up drinking. Give up smoking. I mean, those aren't... I mean, drinking into excess and wearing drunkenness is a sin, but like giving up, like giving up drinking until drunkenness, you're not willing to give that up. You want to go out and party. Doing drugs, it doesn't speak about that, but you know, being in another state of mind. Um, giving up sex, sexual immorality, you know, having abstinence, not having sex until marriage. Um, giving up ad adultery, having sex outside of marriage. Um, what else? I'm like, something like giving up. Uh, say like he wants to give have you um, have you give up certain types of music I mean I, I, there's nothing wrong with the genre like there's different types of music there's country there's rap there's R&B there's rock there's classical um, there's all kinds there's nothing wrong with the genre itself it's the content and which in which um, 
in which the world take, uses this music. Satan can influence through music. It's how, it's how what we follow. Like the world takes it in a completely different direction. It can be through the lust of the flesh, talking about sex, talking about alcohol, talking about all kinds of immorality. But then you have, you know, mostly Christian worship talks about the goodness of God, the glory of God, um, glorifying God in all, all in all His ways. But then, like, are we willing to give up our uh, our worldly music? That's really inappropriate, especially for a believer. Are you willing to give that up? Are you willing to make that sacrifice? Are you willing to circumcise that part of your life and get rid of it? Do away with it? Uh, worldly television, uh, m movies, um, you know, purify. I mean, you know, well, people, you hear Christians a lot talk about protect your gates, which is your eyes and your ears. Like, what comes into your eyes? What are you looking at? It could be pornography. It could be um, violence on TV or a movie or something. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying in the news. I'm talking about media like movies, television, um, like like guard your ears, guard your ear gates, what you're listening to. Um, like I said, music, uh, curse words. It's really, really it puts a um, puts negativity in your in your spirit. Um, whereas mute the music that God wants you to listen to is to. To edify you, to build you up, and whereas the worldly seems like it tears you down, it makes you depressed, it it's or make you see it um, pulls your heart to the lust of the flesh and those things like that. So we need to cut these things off, cut off the the uh, desires of the flesh. You know, become more holy, more acceptable unto God. Living a, being a living a holy and acceptable life unto God. Cutting these things off. T some TVs, mo TV, movies, music. And there's other things. Um, not necessarily have to be on television or on the radio. It can be in a concert. Don't longer go on that. No longer desire these things of the flesh and say that all old things have passed away. Who you were before can't stay the same. This is why who you were before can't stay the same. This is a new believer. You become a new creation in Christ. This is why I, why I believe that. I mean, of course, Christ wasn't here for Abraham to believe him, but he was faithful in God. So that's why. God gave Abram a new name. Is it because he, because all old things passed away? He became a new create. He was really a new creation, making not not following after the lust of the flesh, not falling to sin like at like Adam and Eve did, or anybody before. But he gave him a new name, a father of nations, a new beginning, a new name. Same thing with Sarah, his Eve, Abram's Eve, his rib, um, his rib, he gave her a new name because Abraham, because they're one flesh, because they're married to become fle one flesh. He blessed Eve as well, or Sarah as well, sorry, Abraham's Eve. So he gave her a name, new name. She became a new creation for, well, I mean, she would have to be the obedient to God, but she got her promise. She got her new name. She got, she eventually had the son that God said, the promise that she would have. So Abraham, to keep his side of the promise, was obedient and circumcised everybody in his house. He rushed to be obedient. He didn't. 
He did not waver. He did not. He didn't delay. He didn't put it off to be obedient. He was immediately, he ran. He didn't, they didn't really say he ran to, but he, he ran. He rushed. He did it immediately without hesitation, without God had to ask him again. Because God knew of the promise. Or Abraham knew of the promise that God had with him. The covenant. So, but it was conditional. He said, those who didn't cut off the foreskin would be cut off from his people because he had broken his covenant. So those who don't show change, don't want to change, even though they're claiming Christ here, God's going to know. He's going to see who's, for, who's circumcised in the heart. He's going to know who are his. You might claim Christ, but are you circumcised in your heart? Do you circumcise, circumcise the flesh? Do you make sacrifices? Are you obedient to God? Do you rush to do it? Do you, you have zeal for God to rush in? To rush in like Abraham did. To be obedient. Is your is your heart to do the will of the Father? Ask yourself that. Where is your heart? Is your heart circumcised? Is it ready to receive Christ? Is it, do you want to make Him new? Do you want a new name? Do you want your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Do you want all things to become new? Do you want to become a new creation? I know I said it before, but it, I'm asking you. Do you want to become a new creation in Christ? Do you want to receive the blessings? First of all, salvation. Because there is no other way to heaven except through Jesus, the, by faith through Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace through faith through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He is the Son, God, son, son of God, the God the Son. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So he is God the Son, but he's also the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the Deliverer. He sets us free from sin, hell, and the grave. He is the only one to the Father. No one goes to the Father except through him. That's scripture. There's no other way to heaven. Even though the Lord would probably say there is. It's a lie from the enemy. So you have to be saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. It's a free gift. He gives it to you willingly. He wants to bless you with it. What Are you willing to lay your life down, give up some things, and pick up the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ? It's completely up to you. Do you want your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Spend eternity in heaven with Him? Highly up to you. The only way which you can save it is through Jesus Christ. Amen.